and welcome to the Coach's Corner post game show. Ran into my mentor tonight, Eric Boynton from the Spartanburg Herald Journal, and he is a Celtic stockholder. So I'm going to let him help me give a little opinion of the game. He was checking out his product that he owns tonight, though. But the Charlotte Hornets have played the Celtics here twice in the last two weeks. Got two L's to show for it there. Uh, what an ugly basketball game. That was ugly from start to finish there. I mean, just uh, not a lot of athleticism, not a lot of star power on the court for either team. And both teams just a horrendous first half. I don't know if you'll see a, a worse played first half in the NBA by any two teams all season. But, uh, you know, the Hornets just dug themselves too big a hole early. That, that trailed by as many as 20 and made a little bit of a run to kind of make it interesting late. But uh, just too sloppy a performance and just got down too much early in the third quarter to, to overcome. Well, I, I could fail. Uh, as a child, I was a huge Boston Celtics fan, so kind of mixed emotions right now. But this, this is not your typical Boston Celtics fan. It's not your team. childhood Celtics. No, name. there it's is the no uh, John Havlicek's. Maybe he was doing broadcasting. I don't know. But there was no Bill Russell's. There was no Larry Bird's, Kevin McHale's. This is a bunch of young, scrappy kids with a young, scrappy coach, Brad Stevens, that has done a great job. And they now are 16 and 13 on the season, and the Hornets slip to 15. And 13. Well, Brad Stevens has obviously done a fantastic job with his team. And again, not an overload of talent, but you said, like you said, at a young, scrappy bunch, they make just enough shots. They play good, tough defense, hustle all over the court. They, uh, Danny Ainge, the general manager, has got a lot of draft picks, you know, stocked up. They've made some trades here over the last few years. So, uh, you know, if they could maybe get a free agent to come into Boston, I mean, there's been talk of Boogie Cousins. You hear rumors that a lot of teams are after him. If they could get maybe that one star player in, with the scrappy group around him and maybe hit on one or two draft picks over the next year or two, it kind of seems like they have the foundation under Brad Stevens right now to maybe continue an up their upward arc. But uh, tonight was not really indicative of, a, of an up-and-coming basketball team. Two teams heading in different directions. Boston really playing good basketball, playing well right now. And the Charlotte Hornets that got off to such a great start where a, a buzz around the league early in the year just not playing good basketball right now. I mean, this is going on for about two weeks now where this team has been digging early holes. This team tonight had, what, 16 turnovers, 19 assists, not a good ratio. No. There seems to be no life, no spark. It used to be when they put the bench in, they got a big lift, but just not getting any really fire, intimidation, intensity from anybody on this team right now. No, and they shot, I think, what, less than 30% from uh, from three-point range, 28.6%, 8 of 28. That's normally not going to get it done. It is their fifth game in eight days. I mean, that can always give you some tired legs, you know, makes those uh, three-pointers a little bit more difficult. But the uh, bright spot was Frank Kaminsky tonight. Career highs, uh, 20 points, and I think he had uh, eight rebounds. And, uh, and Kaminsky really, you know, what wasn't over the top great tonight, but uh, was probably one of the better players on the floor for the for the uh, Hornets, and uh, that was like I said, and uh, a coach was saying that uh, that Kaminsky played one of his better games, and it continues to progress. So a lot of people didn't like that draft pick, me included, but. He seems like he's maybe showing some signs of life and, and they could be a solid NBA player. And again, Coach Steve Clifford mentioned that he is probably the second best guy in the post right now, other than Big Al Jefferson, who is still serving his suspension. He, hopefully he'll be back soon there, though. But uh, as Eric mentioned, I think the official stats tonight were Kaminsky had 23 points, seven rebounds tonight. Uh, career highs for him, though. But that's, that's a, a telling sign that if Frank Kaminsky, if you had told me tonight Frank Kaminsky will be your lead score in the game tonight, then I would have told you Boston will win the ball game. Yes, because you're going to need you need to like you've mentioned Kemba Walker's inconsistencies. You're, you're going to need a big game from Walker. You're going to need big games from some of the other players, and especially with Jefferson being out. So if Kaminsky's your main guy, that's going to be tough to beat a lot of teams in the NBA. And again, it's a great sign to see Kaminsky playing better basketball, scoring the basketball like he did tonight. He hit, he made some shots from the perimeter. He did get the ball to the hole a few times, but no, you, you, he cannot be your leading scorer. Uh, most lights, and you're, you're going to wind up with a W. Again, we've got a lot of players, and I say that we, the Hornets, missing in action. You know, Marvin Harrison had been a symbol of consistency all year long. Tonight, one out of five from the floor, three points. Kimball Walker, uh, 
can put up 30 in a game. But again, tonight, subpar game for him, only 10 points, 4 out of 12 shooting. And we've said that along, that he is not a shooter. He is not an NBA caliber shooter, but he is not putting points on the board right now. Uh, Jeremy Lin did contribute 12 points, but a guy who was bringing fire early was Jeremy Lamb. Uh, again, only took four shots tonight, had 12 points, did go the free throw line eight times, though. But this is, you know, some guys, Spencer Halls tonight, uh, 0 for 2, zero points, played five minutes. The bench had really been good to the Hornets early in the year and just really getting no production from about four or five guys. And this is why this team's struggling right now. Well, this is not one of those games where you can definitely paste blame on one area. It was just a poor all-around performance. And, you know, again, five games, eight days. It happens in the NBA. You got the holidays a couple days, Christmas a couple days away. And that, you know, maybe all that can kind of contribute to uh, a sluggish performance. And it's a shame because they did have a sellout tonight, a big crowd, and uh, just wasn't the night for the Hornets on, on really in any regard. Again, this team will continue to play some big games over the holidays as they play the Memphis Grizzlies come in the day after Christmas, the 20th. 28th, not a very good team, but Kobe makes his final appearance playing for the Lakers here on the 28th. And then Doc Rivers and company bring the L.A. Clippers in. So it's L.A. week next week come in on the 30th, though. So these are some games that, you know, that are winnable games for the Hornets, but they got to get their act together. They do, and there's no easy stretches in the NBA. There'll be always a lot of emotion with Kobe making his uh, last tour around the NBA. The Clippers can play some good basketball. Memphis is capable of playing good basketball. So no easy stretch by any imagination, but it'll probably be good for this uh, for the uh, home team here to get a couple of days off, regroup, maybe come back a little refreshed, and like you said, get Al Jefferson back, and maybe they can get things back on the track they were early in the season. Again, not a good night tonight for the Charlotte Hornets as they drop to 15-13. and 13. It was not so long ago we were sitting here bragging about they had the best record in the East and now have dropped down the totem pole a little bit, but again, have got to do some soul searching right now. Have got to go back and, and correct some of these mistakes before they make this an official long losing streak that they have not played well the last couple of games there, though. But not a good performance tonight. No, but like you said, early good play in the season has put them in a, in a decent position uh, headed into the holiday season to where they're right there uh, just on the outside looking in I think starting the night is in the ninth playoff position eight teams go in so you know they, they, they have played well early enough and given themselves a little bit of a cushion where if they can get on a little bit of a roll here they could play themselves right back into playoff contention and and this is you know in the in the east in the eastern conference in the NBA that's you know not a lot of uh, strong teams most of those teams are in the west so a little bit of a roll can get you into that you know sixth fifth maybe even the fifth spot we'll see what happens when they get refreshed after the holidays well we have been fortunate tonight to have one of the Boston Celtics owners, stockholders with us tonight, <laughs> Eric Boynton. We appreciate you stopping by and participating with us tonight post game, though. Wish we had a better report, though. Maybe we'll have a better one next week. But we wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, and we'll see you back here next week during LA Week. Thanks for having me, Coach, and great running into you. Thank you.